Hi everybody and welcome to this fly tying tutorial. For today I'm not going to be showing you a specific pattern. Instead I'm going to be showing you a couple techniques used for parachute dry flies. Uh, parachute dry flies are extremely effective. Um, they're pretty much every dry fly fisherman's go-to right now because they can represent a couple different stages of the mayfly. Today I'm going to be showing you how to tie the initial parachute post and a couple different ways of uh, tying off your hackle once you have the post tied on. So to start off with, I'm just going to be by you. I'm going to be using an Antron parachute post. So here's a color. Um, this is a really just a, a dun colored Antron, some Antron body wool. I'm just going to cut a little section off, probably a larger section than I would normally use, but it'll be for the purposes of this video. So I have a large section of this stuff. Um, to me, whenever I whenever I use this Antron as a body or as, as as a wing material, I apologize. I typically will use high visibility colors and I'll trim them down low. However, I do know a lot of fishermen who prefer to keep a really tall post to represent that wing of the mayfly. So you really have to decide um, what type of a profile you're going for and if you want that wing to really be showing uh, for the fish. Well, whenever I initially cut Antron, the first thing I'll do is just hold it up against my hook and just see if I have too much there because I like to double the Antron over. And normally, if you just cut a single strand, it's probably a little too much. So I'll always pull out just a number of fibers maybe a dozen or so fibers, somewhere around that, that range. And I'm always left with more of a sleeker style of material. Now, there's a couple different ways that you can tie on this post. Some guys recommend literally just bringing the post up from the bottom of the hook and just lashing it a couple times on each side. And then once you get it lashed on each side, then you use this method I'll call the helicopter method where you literally will bring the, the thread around it and you'll be, you'll be literally go, making circles on top of the hook. So you're not actually lashing this antron anymore to the top of the hook. Instead, you're just bringing it around that post. Then after you have it around a number of times, the post will be secure. You can then perform some figure eights around the hook, and then you have your post. So that's one really quick way of attaching the post. At this point, uh, you can kind of trim it somewhere along this area uh, and then finish the rest of the fly or um, there's a cut you can leave it long and it just really varies for each tire. So I might just trim this off. That was one quick way of putting on that post. I'll show you another method. Let me kind of reset everything and I'll show you one other method of putting on a post. Okay, so now I'm going to be tying a post in again. This will be the second mench the sec second method that I'll be um, demonstrating. So I have my little piece of Antron. I'm going to pick out a number of fibers. Again, somewhere around a dozen. If you count these out, you are absolutely crazy. So let me just get some of those out of there. Straighten the rest of the Antron that I have left. So the first time I, I showed you, I literally put the Antron underneath the hook and then lashed it in. Another easy way and a little bit simpler method, um, but it, I don't know if it's necessarily always as secure. I'll be holding my thread towards me and I'll place the Antron underneath the thread. In the video, you can kind of see it bending. So I'll place it underneath the thread, hold on to it with one hand, so now I can kind of position that Antron anywhere I want, and then lash the thread to the hook. Okay, by doing so, now I've just secured that Antron uh, directly to the hook via the thread, but I'm not able to pull up with it, because if I pull up, it still will be pulling up against the hook, but I don't know if it's as secure as the initial one. Once you get to this point, you can see my antron's already separating. Sometimes it's smart to put a little half hitch in if you're going to utilize this method. And then grab onto the, the fibers that are, that are pointing up. And again, go back to this method, which I'll just call it the helicopter method for a lack of a better name. But you're literally just turning the thread, if you're looking at it from a bird's, bird's eye perspective, pretty much in a helicopter fashion, 360 degrees around the base. Okay, and I will typically only build up a, approximately a millimeter at the bottom of the base. I'll kind of hold this up so you can see it. And let me grab a little bodkin here. And I'm only building it up a little ways. Some people will go higher up if they want a tighter, um, a tighter post. Some people will only put a few wraps there all together. If, they wanna, if you want to put a lot of hackle on this fly, you may want to go a little higher up because I typically will only hackle the fly up to that point. So I only make two or three maximum bends at this, uh, up, up this post. So now I'll just put a couple wraps to figure eight it, and that would be the end of this one. 
I'll just put a quick half hitch. I'll get my thread out of here just to give you, again, just to show you what the post will look like. And at this point, you can either trim it or you can leave it long and trim it later. Normally, I like to trim it. Um, just And I leave it still probably a little longer than I would when I'm actually fishing. But I like to leave it long still at that point. So those were two quick methods on how to put on a post when using a synthetic type material. Uh, now I'm going to just show you a couple different methods to hackle the, the post and then how to tie off. Okay, I have a different hook in here, as you can see. This is obviously not necessarily a dry fly hook, but I'm just using this hook so you can really see exactly what's going on first with my hackle. So I just grabbed a piece of grizzly hackle. It's probably not the right size for this hook or for those other hooks that I'm going to be using. So I'll just hold up this hackle, and I'll show you a couple different methods that I utilize whenever I'm tying in hackle. An easy method is to simply take these fibers at the bottom, pull against them, pull them against the grain, and simply strip them off. So you expose that stem. Then you'll place the stem on the hook and wrap it in. Now there's a little stem showing on my side. I can trim that or I can completely wrap that flush and not worry about it. There is a downside to this. The one downside is, depending on how much tension you had initially placed on the thread and um, whether or not you have that thread properly secured, when you pull this hackle, it could simply slide out. So that's one, that's one thing you really have to keep in mind whenever you're tying a uh, hackle in. So another easy method that I've um, seen, seen utilized, and I've, I've actually utilized myself depending on the type of fly. Again, you stretch this out, but then I'm going to take a set of scissors, and I'm just going to trim up both sides just a little bit. And I'll show you what this looks like now. So I just trimmed up both sides and I've left little pieces of those feathers in there. And what I actually did though, I created basically little barbs. So I'm leaving those little pieces, those little feathers in there as barbs. So now I can tie those barbs in. And as I pull my my feather, it's much tougher to just have it simply slide right out. So that's a second method you can utilize when tying in. Again, if I pull hard enough, it is going to pop out. There's no way I can keep it absolutely secure. But that is one method of securing it. Finally, I'll mention another method. So let me just reset my, my hackle. So here's the third method. This is a slick little method. So again, I have my initial hackle. I'm going to pull some of these feathers off it. So I have my exposed stem. This might be a little bit longer than I need. But I'm going to tie in the stem. and then bend it back. So I'm going to actually bend this piece back. Let me see if I can get a hold of it. One on the other side. So now as I bend it back, and I lock it in again, there is no way it's coming out. Um, now it's completely locked in. Uh, that method was shared um, by Tony Spezio, a buddy of mine. He mentioned that method. In fact, he actually saw me tying a parachute once and said, hey, Tim, try this instead. And it's a really slick little method because, as you can see, it's much, again, like before, it's, I can get it out, but it's going to require a little bit more. And in fact, if you take a look at what went on, I actually left the stem in there. So the, the, the feather broke before it would pull out. So kind of keep those three methods in mind whenever you are hackling. I'm going to go back to those posts that I initially tied, and I'll show you how to finish those off. Okay, I have my, I'm back to the hook with the post in it. I'm going to strip some fibers off this grizzly hackle. I'm going to tie this one in a la Tony Spezio. So I'm just going to simply place this feather directly on top of the hook. So directly on top of the shank. and Just wrap it in with a couple locking wraps. Now that stem's going straight out over the eye, as you can see. So I'm just going to gently bend that back a little bit. And as it goes back, I'm just going to keep it there in that place and lock it in. Now that feather is not going anywhere. Okay, at this point, I can make a couple wraps. As I wrap, I'm going to be moving my hackle up and down so I don't push those other fibers or mat them against my parachute, against the post, that is. You can see me just gently rocking those back and forth. And I made about three turns. As you, If you've watched any of my other videos, you probably know that I believe that less is definitely more. As I made this last turn, I want to try to stay low. I'm going to pull the fiber back towards me, hold it with my right hand, and then with my left hand, I'm going to lift up all these extra fibers, all of my parachute fibers. 
At this point, I can let go. I can lock that feather in. One, two, three. Get a couple wraps in there. Now I can let go. I'm going to pull the fiber towards me. Just get a couple wraps in front of it. And now if you look, all those extra feathers are splayed out from that, from that, um, from that feather. So I'm just going to grab it and cut it as close as I can to the hook. At this point I can then go back over all my, all my feathers, come back to the eye, put a little half hitch. Oops, get a little whip finish in there. Make sure my eye is clear, which it is. Grab my scissors, trim my thread, pull my post back up. Make sure it's going to sit the way I want it to. Make sure all those feathers are splayed out correctly. And then trim my antron. Get all those extra fibers out of there. I just want to look around, make sure there's no fiber splaying down, and there's not. So that's a really quick method. It's a great method to finish off a parachute. Some guys will, um, they really like the strategy of actually finishing that feather and locking it in against the post. That's another great strategy. Um, but for me, this is typically, this is my number one way of finishing off a parachute post. Okay, here's a second way of finishing off a parachute fly. So I strip the fibers off. I'm not going to be tying this one in a la Tony Spezio. I don't have to worry about it. It's not going to be slipping. So I have the feather tied in. It, it's, and for the purposes of this video, it's, it's okay if the, if the feather goes either way. And that means whichever side is up is really not that important. So I have my thread directly tied directly in front of my post, and I have the feather. I'm just going to wrap this around a few times. All right, so I have this wrapped around a number of times and I'm ready to tie off. Instead of pulling my feather straight forward and tying it off that way, what a number of tires will do is then pick up their thread and then literally helicopter their thread around, kind of like we were, were initially creating the post. Now you have to do this carefully. I'll pull it down so I go both over and under this feather tip. You'll see me moving my thread up and down. But what's nice about this method, after I make approximately two turns, I can let go of the feather tip. I'm only going to need approximately four turns, and I like to finish my last few turns as I'm pulling it closer to the parachute, towards the bottom of that parachute post. And as I make that around fifth turn, I'm going to go down on the far side of the hook. I can lift everything up in the front, make a couple quick wraps, and then simply put in my whip, my half hitch, and then whip finish. I see I got a couple fibers trapped, and that's really not that big of a deal. I can either trim them or use my bodkin and try to pull them out. Let's see if I can get my bodkin first. And I believe I got them out. Let's see if I got them both out. No, I definitely, definitely have one out, one still in there, and that's not a problem. So I'm just going to trim that one out of there. Then I still have the tip of my feather. I'll show you what that looks like right now. It's coming off on this side. So I can literally just reach in there with my scissors and trim it off as close to the stem as possible. Then you can adjust all the extra parachute fibers. Make sure they're sitting the way you want them to sit. I take my scissors, push those fibers down, come up just a little bit, and then trim my parachute post. And with your fingers, you can take all the fibers, fluff them up, make them go whichever way you'd really like them to go. But that is another really easy way to tie off the parachute post. You have less fibers that are going to get trapped near the eye of your hook. Whenever I'm instructing beginning fly tires, I will definitely recommend that method. Um, if you notice, whenever I was tying with the hackle, I was simply using my hand, but whenever you're using hackle pliers as a beginner, it's a lot easier. So that was the second method for tying off a parachute fly, um, the parachute hackle on this parachute fly. Uh, I hope you really enjoyed this tutorial. hope um, you were able to gain a couple new pieces of information from it. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them on this YouTube page, or you can email me at tkamisa at gmail.com. Thank you, everybody.